in his campaign. In his campaign, he said that he will pursue a military approach in West Papua. We know that the situation will only get worse this rule. West Papua needs short-term friends and long-term friends. We hope that Scottish Parliament can join the International Parliamentarian for West Papua and add their voice the growing cry for a UN human rights visit to West Papua. We have been isolated and voiced for a long time and we need support to speak for us, just like a Basque country and Catalan Parliament and we hope that Scottish Parliament can make their own call for UN visit to West Papua. We last held a meeting in Scottish Parliament in 2010, and I also came to Glasgow in 2014 to witness the independent referendum, even though there were stronger differences between Scottish people and the referendum was signing the example of two democracy and self-determination. There was no violence. No one was forced to vote one way. No one was threatened. I saw this referendum as a beacon of hope that my people are fighting for. The Indonesia claimed that West Papua has let go of its sovereignty in 1961, 69, which act of free choice what Papuan call act of no choice. This is a lie. The act of no choice was fraud. Indonesia handpicked to 1026. West Papuans and forced them to vote against independence on behalf of over 800,000. They were threatened with death, with having their tongue cut out and dropped from the helicopter onto their villages if they refuse. Even UN official who over, oversaw the act of no choice said it was white was. West Papua has never exercised its right to self-determination. Instead, we suffer 60 years military occupation. Since then, over 500,000 West Papuans have been killed. This is the hidden genocide. West Papua also needs friends because Indonesia has closed our land to outside world. For six years journalists have been uh, sixty years journalists have been banned back from the scene. What is really happening in West Papua, their own eyes. The BBC, French twenty four, ABC they are all banned. Indonesia all banned the NGO, just like North Korea. Aid worker from in assisting West Papuans. But most crazy of all is that Indonesians banned the UN while sitting on the UN Human Rights Council. It has been six years since Indonesia first invade, invited the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights to visit West Papua. More than 100 countries have demanded the UN visit, including Pacific Island Forum and Organization of African, Caribbean, and Pacific State, the European Commission. But Indonesia continued to refuse. Since then, over 100,000 people have been displaced from the home. They are refugees in their own land. Over 75 thousands West Papua remain displaced uh, this day in place called Intanjaya, Punjab Jaya, Nduga, Maibarat and uh, Oksibil. They are living in the bush without adequate supply for water, food and medicine. In West Papua are the two crime, genocide and ecocide, just like Indonesia kill us, they also kill our forests, poison our rivers destroy our mountains. Indonesia already operate the Freeford mine, the biggest gold mine in the entire world. This means this mine has destroyed the ancestral land of Amume people and poisoned the Aikwa River. 
Now huge new gold mines size of Jakarta is build, being built called Wabu Block. Since 2018, BP has also expanded the Tangu gas field. One gas field in West Papua will now provide 35% of Indonesia gas. This is modern day of colonialism in action. West Papua are ready to grow, govern its own affair. So to the ULWP, we have our own governance structure, we have our constitution, our cabinet, and our seven regional executive. We have held uh, our first congress last year uh, where the people decide their own leaders. We also have a green state vision for independent West Papua, free from Indonesia, uh, and development. The Green State Vision is our promise to the world that West Papua rainforest is the land of the world. The third large rainforest on the earth after Amazon, the Congo, we need to protect it. Without our rainforest in West Papua, you cannot fight climate change in Scotland or anywhere else in the world. Thank you again for hosting me and for support West Papua. Please stand behind support UN High, High Commissioner Fisi. You can be a voice of the voiceless people in West Papua. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Benny. Um, <coughs> pardon me. Um, so what we now have is um, ULNWP Prime Minister Edison Baromi. Uh, via a pre-recorded video. Um, is that available? It's, uh, yeah. Yeah. Perkenalkan, menurut saya, Edison Wahnomi, Perdana Menteri Professor Kavronin, selaku Perdana Menteri US Papua, Professor Kavronin, and that menyampaikan current situation atau situasi terkini West Papua Professor Government Kabinet dan mewakili tubuh pimpinan hari ini kunjungan Komisi Pilihan PBB belum diizinkan sampai hari ini dan juga selaku PM mau menyampaikan bahwa lebih kurang 500 ribu rakyat Pes Papua laki, perempuan, anak telah dibunuh dan situasi Pes Papua hari ini lebih dari 25 ribu pasukan organik yang sedang beroperasi di Pes Papua dan ini Papua benar-benar hari ini dalam darurat kemanusiaan. West Papua situasi terkini benar-benar dalam darurat kemanusiaan. Dan hari ini ada state crime atau kejahatan negara ilegal mining, ilegal fishing, ilegal logging yang sedang sistematis terstruktur sedang berlangsung di West Papua. Oleh karena itu, pada kesempatan ini, selaku PM Rosal Gafferman, mendesak perlunya segera kunjungan Komisi Tinggi Hampir PD Sopo untuk melakukan investigasi langsung terhadap berbagai pelanggaran HAM. PM Rosal Gafferman, dan seluruh air West Papua dari tujuh wilayah adat tadi saya ready dan berai berai bapak Romo Pago Pak Amin menyatakan we support the Scottish Friends of West Papua Lodge yang sedang berlangsung saat ini sekali lagi we support the Scottish Friends of West Papua Lodge successful Scottish Friends Office Papua Bapak Yahweh memberkati Wah, 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 wah Bapak Yahweh memberkati kita semua Freedom
very strong and, um, and a message which uh, we all need to stand with. Um, can I ask IPWP Chair Alex Sobel, MP, uh, to give us some words, please? Thank you. Thank you, thank you Bill. Thank you for hosting us today. Uh, so we have this important meeting to launch the Scottish Friends of West Papua. The International Parliamentarians of West Papua, which I chair, is a network of parliamentarians from around the world. The IPWP has individual chapters in Parliament, including the Westminster UK Parliament, the European Parliament, the Australian Parliament, New Zealand Parliament, and Scot uh, the Spanish Parliament. We also have a network of vice chairs around the world. Recent IPWP work is focused on human rights in West Papua. As you heard from Benny, the human rights situation, and they're listening in fact, is very core. And no international mission has been there since the World Council of Churches in February 2019. The IPWP has been increasing international pressure for a visit which was agreed by the UNHRC and Indonesia. But Indonesia has come up with different bureaucratic reasons why this hasn't gone ahead for nearly six years now. So it raised questions and motions in various parliaments, including by Carlos Kujimon, MEP, to the Vice President, High Representative of the European Union Foreign Affairs and Security, Joseph Borrell where Vice President Rao stated the EU encourages Indonesia to allow the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights to visit West Papua and has urged Indonesia to send special invitations to all special rapporteurs and mandate holders. This unequivocal statement of support for the visit made on behalf of the EU Commission adds to the great number of individual states and regional bodies that have voiced concerns over human rights violations in West Papua and Indonesia's continued denial of access for a visit from the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights. These include the Pacific Islands Forum, the Organisation of African, Caribbean, Pacific States, and both the UK and the US missions to the United Nations Human Rights Council. We have seen actions in individual European parliaments as well. We have the landmark intervention Dutch Parliament calling for the UN uh, HCR to visit West Papua, which is followed by comments made uh, two years ago by the Dutch Foreign Affairs Minister, Wopke Hoekstra, who stated that it is important to have such a visit by the High Commissioner as soon as possible. Support comes has also been made by the UK government, where successive government ministers over successive years have stated they support proposed visit of the UN Commissioner for Human Rights to Papua. I encourage both sides to agree on dates for the visit. I just tabled another uh, question to the Foreign Office last month, and they reiterated their support for a visit. The High Commission Office said that it still aims to secure access to West Papua, but the obstacles have been placed in its way by the Indonesian state. The High Commission Officer put out strongly worded statements condemning human rights abuses in West Papua. On the 4th of July 2023, Alice Werumi, and then Jeff Chu, Under Secretary General and Special Advisor Secretary General on the Prevention of Genocide, stated In Indonesia, the human rights situation in Papua remains deeply concerning. This includes alleged harassment, arbitrary arrests, and detention of Papuans, and non recognition of the rights of Indonesian Papuans that has enabled the alleged appropriate appropriation of indigenous lands, humanitarian assessment and assistance as well as genuine inclusive dialogue to address the underlying grievances is encouraged. The International Parliament for West Papua held a major meeting in the UK Parliament on October the 18th, 2023, calling once again the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights to be urgently allowed to visit West Papua. The IPWP meeting was held to support the communication of the Melan Melanesian Spearhead Group Leader Summit in August 2023, urging Indonesia to facilitate a UN visit to West Papua before the next Leaders Summit. 2024, which has now been and gone. Indonesia promised to facilitate a UN visit in 2018. Six years on, they are no closer to land UN access. Over 85 countries have now called the UN visit. These include all member states of the Pacific Island Forum, the Organisation of African Caribbean Pacific States, the European Commission, and individual nations between the UK, Spain, the US, and the Netherlands. And Indonesia's Universal Peer Review. Two years ago, in over eight countries, including the US, Canada, Australia, expressed profound concern over the human rights situation in West Papua and urged international investigation. Last year, the 52nd session of the United Nations Human Rights Council, joint IPWP and International Lawyers West Papua delegation, attended the session accredited by the UK government. Tim Hansen, the, the leader of the ILWP, and myself, as well as Stephanie Kalikadari, of GLAD held various meetings with special rapporteurs, their officers and country missions to UNHRC and I followed this up by attending the recent 55th session of the UNHRC meeting more special rapporteurs. These included meetings with Alexander Zanthaki, special rapporteur in the field of cultural rights with a subsequent follow-up meeting in London. Alexander found the evidence significant deprivation of cultural rights compelling and requested a visit to Indonesia to witness these abuses herself 
but to date the request has not been accepted by Indonesia. The delegation also met with missions from the UK and US. We also met in London with Mary Law, a special rapporteur of the Human Rights Defenders, who was well versed in the dire situation of human rights defenders in Papua and has also been unable to secure a visit. I also met with a special rapporteur of the Freedom Religion of Belief, Nazila Ghanaia, already through the work of the work, already knew of the work of the World Council Church and aware of what's happened, but very concerned about reporting the extrajudicial killing of clerics and will be under, undertaking more work in West Papua. I met Nazila both the 52nd and 55th session of the UNHRC. I also met Nicholas Lavre, 55th session, who is a special rapporteur on minority rights. And just like I, and, and just last week, I met Mr. <coughs> Rajan Kapal, special rapporteur for adequate housing. All of these special rapporteurs are committed to um, defending human rights in West Papua. The ILWP and IPW have also met evidence when the opportunity arose and special rapporteurs and mandate holders gave the appropriate calls for evidence, including the Universal Program Review of Indonesia at the UNHRC. This year, we're prioritising the of special rapporteurs and mandate holders once more. This, with the six special rapporteurs we already established a relationship with, covers over half the UNHRC mandates, and all of these agree just human rights issues exist in West Papua highlighting the need for a wide and broad visit to West Papua, which is now six years overdue. I'll continue to um, seek a meeting with Volker Turk as the United Nations High Commission of Human Rights and press on him and Indonesia the immediate need for a visit. There are currently 14 MAP country mandate holders. In Brussels in January, the European Parliament of West Papua meeting, I announced the IPWP's new call for the UNHRC to appoint a special rapporteur on the situation of human rights in Indonesia with a particular focus on West Papua and other indigenous peoples. Indonesia has escaped scrutiny needed on human rights and working broadly as an approach has failed. We need a singular and unique focus on Indonesia, especially in light of changing President Jakarta this year. This is why we need a 15th country mandate holder to take on the lack of transparency and openness on the reported flagrant human rights abuses undertaken by the Indonesian regime. The UNMWP has declared on various occasions they are ready and waiting to welcome the High Commissioner and this is what the new West Papua people need from the international community. We heard it again today from Edison. As international scrutiny is intensified, Indonesia is running out of excuses not to allow access to the United Nations High Commission rights. I look to you in the Scottish Parliament for further support. I urge you to meet with uh, the relevant bodies, whether in the UK or more broadly. And I asked today a couple of specific requests to write to the UK ambassador to the UN in Geneva to meet with Volker Turk and regarding the mission to West Papua. And also to invite you to an IPWP meeting in London later this year, uh, where I will invite all members of the Scottish Parliament who support West Papua to join me, and also a subsequent European meeting in Brussels, where we will again convene the European Parliament to West Papua under the leadership of Carlos Puigdemont and MEP. We also have a number of devolved parliaments, including the Basque and Catalan parliaments, and soon we're going to try and establish a meeting with the Flemish parliament and ask Scottish, and Scottish colleagues to join us in this work of engaging with devolved parliaments and assemblies in Europe. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much indeed for that, Alec. Um, Alec Sabel, MP. Um, and I of course, as the Chair of the International Parliamentarians for West Papua. Now, um, there aren't a lot of us here, sadly, <coughs> and I've got to leave very soon because there's going to be a boat downstairs at 2 o'clock. Um, however, um, Sir Paul um, Sweeney, um, he and his team have just come in. Uh, Paul, do you have anything quickly? Just to say uh, welcome to the Scottish Parliament, and it's great to join you today. Bill and uh, my colleague Alex as well, and um, Bill Pat doing this really worthy cause. I know there's a huge long standing campaign uh, run for the All Party Parliamentary Group, uh, and it's good to be able to extend this to the Scottish Parliament. So, you know, just here to add a note of support um, for, the, for the effort. Thank you. Yes? I just, I just want to thank Paul, because when he was in the Westminster Parliament, he was a member of the All Party Parliament of West Papua, and it's great that he can join this new Scottish Friends of West Papua group and carry on the long standing support he's given to the cause of human rights in West Papua. So thank you, Paul. Well, thank you for that. And no. what um, you can see at the moment is <coughs> yes, I'm certainly very happy to follow up on what you said. Um, that's, uh, if you can maybe send us an email with those uh, items on it, itemised. Um, requests and what we can follow up with 
and um, we'll try and do that. <coughs> we'll speak to other um, colleagues across the Parliament and get as many as we can to actually be supportive and I'm sure that we'll be able to do that cross party. Um, <coughs> and just I listen to all of what's been said in terms of what's happened to the people, uh, the West Papuan people, um, at the hands of the government of Indonesia, successive governments of Indonesia. And, um, and it's, it's just it's disgusting and disgraceful. And the world, I think, is unaware of most of what's taking place, mm -hmm. um, which it shouldn't be. Um, but I think we need, it's incumbent on us to embarrass, if they can be embarrassed, these people in Indonesia <coughs> and get countries across the world to stand together against this behaviour and get the United Nations access um, to, to this area. Um, I think it's incredibly important. I'm being sorry about the throat being away and all that sort of thing, but um, all I can say is that, <coughs> pardon me, all I can say is that, um, Benny, um, thank you so much for being here. It's really kind of you and your family and, and others um, who are standing together. I've got a hand up there from Chris White. Thank you. Um, yeah, great to what Bill says, obviously, but, you know, coming today, um, I think it's wah, <coughs> one, isn't it, for thank you? Mm -hmm. Wah. Um, and just, because we're listening to things there, and I'm having a wee look, look, yourself as well, particularly speaking about what's going on in Westminster, because obviously we've devolved Westminster, we've got a bit of a the cloud, etc. Um, and I'm thinking of the issue of like, things like, so if these people don't comply with maybe what, the UK government is maybe calling for to happen across the UN, etc. Um, is there an issue, is there a possibility of like looking at sanctions or that type of thing? Because just looking at that issue there, I'm looking here and I'm seeing that, so the trade is like roughly one and a half billion with um, Indonesia, and um, that's imports from Indonesia, and the vast majority of that, bizarrely enough, is like shoes and clothes, and the, I've found in the last few years some of the best campaigns in the world to get people to actually set up and notice is when you hit like Primark or you hit like these people who are maybe manufacturing in Indonesia and if people are not going to buy their clothes then A, they quickly you know, re you know, do something about it there's a lot of international pressure put on them but virally through social media and stuff like that it's just insane the amount of people that would get on board with something so that's our observation, I suppose, and then maybe the question about the sanctions regime, I guess. Yeah, can I, can I answer that recording? Can I answer that recording this? Yeah, okay. So, um, <laughs> one of the things, if, um, if the EU are currently negotiating in a trade deal with Indonesia, they're in the 14th round, mm. I think, of negotiations. <laughs> the EU have, have got quite clear uh, guidelines on human rights when negotiating trade deals. So we're putting pressure on the EU through, through Carlos Puigdemont to Burrell. That's in the public domain. But the reason we want to go to the Flemish Parliament, why we want support you know, from the Scottish Party to go to the Flemish Parliament, is the Flemish Parliament, like the Wallonian Parliament in, in Brussels, has to vote on trade deals. Yeah. Yeah? And so we can get the Flemish Parliament to agree that without this visit, they will not vote for the EU Indonesia trade deal, then the EU Indonesia trade deal will be finished. And that is a massive issue for Indonesia, probably bigger than them allowing the UN to go. Yeah, yeah. So it's, that's where the leverage comes in. In terms of sanctions, so like I've been recently been successful in lobbying UK government uh, sanction the Speaker of the Ugandan Parliament uh, uh, for, for corruption and two former Ugandan ministers. And, I, and again, again, um, the UK government sanctioned five uh, Israeli settlers in the West Bank for destruction of Palestinian villages. So. Where we're looking at deforestation, it's not just in West Papua. There are very widespread um, human rights abuses. Uh, I just met with people from uh, indigenous people from Sulawesi in Indonesia. It's, it's quite widespread, actually, across Indonesia. We can we can look at the British companies who are involved, British companies who own land um, as well. So we, we are going to try and put pressure on that. But if we can find examples where there is corruption, which I'm sure there will be. In Indonesia, um, we can pressure the UK government to sanction individual politicians, which actually is the best, yeah, yeah. that gives the most pressure. So we, we are looking for opportunities where we can put pressure on British companies. 
We're also, you know, very involved in the campaign around the side. You know, the Green State vision is very strong on the side, and we need to plan that in UK law as well. So all of these things will all sit together. <coughs> right, um, I'm actually going to have to go. Yeah. Um, <coughs> Paul would like to just join in the back of you, but I'm going to have to leave. Look, um, thank you very much indeed. Thank, thank you. you. And thank you to everyone. Thanks for the just a quick point to note that my colleague Monica Lennon um, is introducing a member's bill on equal sites, so there might be an element to, to consider the as well. We I mean, have a delight to meet with her. We've got really good wording uh, now in the IPU on either side, which was guided through by myself and Leslie Veselenko from Ukraine. So, uh, and the Indonesian government didn't object because they didn't know it was about them. Monica's next door in her CPT on construction, so Monica Lane and yeah. uh, Paul's colleague. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, we've had, I think both myself and Benny have had a number of meetings with Peter Crove of the World Council of Churches. I met him actually when I was in Geneva um, a couple of months ago when I went to the UNHRC. Um, and th there, are, there are quite a lot of lessons. Um, one of the their main issues, which is why I went to see Nazima Ghanaia, who's the UN um, Human Rights Rapporteur on Free Religious Belief, is there is a crackdown on Christianity in West Papua. So, Indonesia is a majority Muslim country, but West Papua is a majority Christian uh, area. <laughs> so, um, the, the, and there have been, as I said, although not, not recently, not this year, but have in previous years been the killing of clerics. Yeah. And that is a real concern for the Council of Churches. And the, they operate through the Pacific Council of Churches, they operate on the ground. So the best form of intelligence we have really is from the Pacific Council Churches, World Council Churches to us, apart from the UNMWP. And but but no offence to the UNMWP, the, the Council Church is seen as a more independent body, and so it's easier to utilise their um, evidence. Fantastic. Well, sorry Paul, do you want to no, Yeah, no, thank you so much for coming along, Paul. We didn't quite have time today either. Can we get my bag in a bit? to watch the little presentation, etc. that we had planned. But what we're going to do is um, forward beyond the presentation from today. Mm -hmm. And then I'll put that out to, um, to yourselves, obviously, and also all the members of the Scottish family, just saying this is what happened at the event. Um, and inviting them, obviously, to watch the, the mm -hmm. slide show. And then another idea that we had was, <coughs> once we're back in wherever we are, a little, individualised letter that we can work on together and then we can print it off here and distribute it to all the members say, you know, you were here, this is what we did, da, 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 this is what we're calling for and with some more information yeah. how they can then get in contact personally because obviously, you know, um, as we all know the last few weeks up here has been um, so busy. It's a great way to sign the Brussels Declaration. Right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah, so if we say please, we'll say that. We'll put it out electronically and the letter form so that the, 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 the link to the site would be easier for them. I know there's some colleagues where this declaration might not be good. Maybe the self, but yeah. Brussels might be easier. <laughs> I think it was just the four before, wasn't it? There was Ailey Campbell, there was Jamie Hepburn, um, Bill, and um, Linda Fabiani. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. Good if Jamie could maybe do it again now that he's a minister of government as well. I don't know if Bill mentioned he had gone to speak to Angus Robertson, who is our um, sort of constitution stroke for affairs um, uh, minister. Um, but yeah, it's just been one of those days, obviously, with all the new cabinet yeah. and things like that. It's a historic day to come. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, they're always <laughs> wanting in there, you know. But no, thank you so much for coming, you know. And don't go straight back down to Oxford, obviously, you need to go for a little walk around. <laughs>